Good morning. This is Jennifer Tebow, and today is Thursday, May 30th, 2013. Now I'm just a few minutes after nine o'clock. I told you all I was backed up <laughs> and I was serious. I had some things that I've been writing down that I said I wanted to record, but I wanted to be in a really good space um, and quiet and all that great stuff so I could record. So here I am again, and you bet your bottom dollar. Here I go with my gambling references again that I'll have more to do uh, today as well. But I wanted to talk on the topic of stop being gray. So what does that mean? Well, it has nothing to do with gray hair, which I have a couple, a couple, three, four, maybe 20, 25 on my head now. It has nothing to do with hair. It has to do with being decisive. Um, I'm relating this in particular to the topic of uh, corporate diversity, workplace diversity. And why do I use a kind of more of a, non-color term to then attach with diversity. Well, as many people know, I have been, uh, I've been working in the area of diversity for quite some time, uh, both as being kind of a hired gun to pr offer diversity intelligence to organizations privately and then sometimes publicly too, but also just as a personal um, kind of give back to the corporate world from a, a talent, you know, that dangerous word talent, finding great talent standpoint as well. So it's kind of a personal hobby and a love of mine as well as it's been a career focus for me. So when I talk about, um, you know, what that potentially, uh, what that could look like and, uh, you know, when we talk about what does being gray mean? Well, I sit down and I read a lot about how organizations define diversity. If you want to just have fun, you know, giggles and grins, this is the kind of stuff I do um, in the middle of the night on a Saturday night. Uh, some people go on dates. I look at corporate organizations, diversity statements. If you read the statements, all I can say is once I've read it is blah, 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 most organizations, because they're trying to be so broad so broad that it just becomes this blanket gray statement that really means nothing. That doesn't tell me anything. Um, and so it's nice to try to be as inclusive as you can in your statement and tell me diversity is everywhere and it's everything. That's true. But for the purpose of what you need diversity to, to be for your organization, you got to stop being gray. You got to define it. You want to know why? Like any initiative. When you define it very loosely, very broadly, and don't take the time to be specific, guess what else happens? Any campaign that's focused on helping that initiative will, will go in every direction under the sun, including the people that you hire to really carry that initiative into you know, these positive results. If you're telling them, um, well, we, we want to be very careful. Why do you want to be very careful with how you define diversity? It's a personal choice. Uh, every, for every organization, I say personal from an organization standpoint, it's your choice and exactly how you choose to define diversity. So define it. Stop copying and pasting from other people, from other companies that are just as gray and put out your same gray statement that doesn't say anything. A diversity statement, if you think about it, should be a, a, an, an opportunity to attract people, whether it's your customers, your buyers, sellers, vendors, stakeholders, stockholders, it should be something that is attractive, not something that makes me say, what, what did they just say? Or did they really say anything? So if you're not, if your statement's not saying much, what does that mean about the initiatives that are going to come from that statement? That definition should be so clear that it, that, that what stems from it what stems from it is everything else that you're interested in doing. Think about your diversity definition or statement as truly that seed that grows, that, that you put into the ground. Now, my, my grandparents were farmers. So I know a little bit about planting and creating things that grow and feed not only a family, but, you know, feed a community. My, my grandparents were very successful farmers. But the most important thing about farming is to plant the right seed. And that comes with definition. Imagine if they wanted to feed people, but they didn't really you know, focus on what they put in the ground. Imagine that. What do you think they're going to get? Who knows? 
you know, who knows? And uh, and if if you didn't pay attention to what you put in the ground, it doesn't matter how much you water it. doesn't matter what else you do after that. You don't know what comes of it. So that diversity statement, that definition needs to be specific. And it's okay to admit from today and in the past that you got it wrong. That's okay. But it's not okay to say from today moving forward that you're going to continue to get it wrong. That's not okay. That's actually extremely unacceptable to me. You've got to define diversity. Hey, one of the biggest challenges as I work with organizations and try to connect them with great resources is they're so gray on the seed that they don't really know what they want to do after that. You've got organizations committing money to a diversity department, but it's just because that's what you're supposed to do. Nobody's really clearly defined how you make this thing work. And it's very evident in how you see that organizations come up with their diversity sh- structure. It's, it's really, um, I'm going to use this word and it's going to seem very strong, but it's a shame to see that an organization would define um, this diversity department, create it, and they put it as a side dotted line to things. Really? Is that your dotted line? Your ability to find the best and the brightest all over the world to help your organization? That's dotted? Gee, I hate, you know, what's, what's, I mean, so if that's dotted, your talent, because diversity drives your talent, your product, your perspective, your innovation, everything else. If that's dotted, I'm going to tell you, you got some things wrong. If that's dotted, if your diversity definition is gray, if that, you don't know what you're putting in the ground, you got some things backwards. Now I've often said, and this is, this is my own soapbox. So just bear with me for just 30 seconds, but I've often said some of the best some of the best diversity officers. If you want to really name a chief diversity officer, it's not someone within the company oftentimes. I'm going to tell you who those people are. Some of the best, most highly skilled, respected talent are former CEOs of other organizations. Well, why do I say that? Well, because they have a proven track record. You know, I'm really big on proven track record, right? They have a proven track record of being able to understand all of the elements of an organization and what it takes to drive the big goals, the big objectives. That's the person. If I'm building this mega organization, that's who I'm, that's who I'm hiring him or her. That's who's going to be in that role. Someone that says, I don't want to be a a chief executive officer anymore. I I want to make an impact in this way. What a great, uh, what, what a great transition plan for former CEOs other than the golf course, right? (laughs) What a great plan. We oftentimes think that a CEO is the pinnacle uh, for in a person's career, but not necessarily so. Uh, what great talent. And let me tell you why I say this person. Number one, I see organizations commit a very big sin. They name somebody within their organization as their chief diversity officer. More than likely, most people in the organization have never heard of this person. That's a shame. You know, a shame on the organization for not marketing this person better, but they don't know the person. So you know what that means? That person's going to have a very tough time influencing anybody in the organization on any new initiatives. Why? Because they don't trust that person. That person may not have the proven track record that says we need to be paying attention to that person. Uh, one, one organization in particular, large, large organization, thousands and thousands of employees, global organization. They named a chief diversity officer at one point that guess what? That person had never been in the area of diversity in their entire career. Doesn't that just make you want to pass out? Like that makes me literally want to pass out that an organization would actually hire or, and, and they didn't hire the, 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 in this example, that person was internal. They kind of moved them around to that spot, but it makes me want to pass out that you would put up a, a person in that particular role, such an important role in your organization. And you would identify a person that has shown you no real track record for success a person that has not proven they're interested in the area at all, and a person that hasn't demonstrated any real knowledge in the area. I mean, who does that? And in this example, the organization had some some organizational shifts, and I guess instead of firing the person, that's the position they got. But gee, what a shame. What a shame for both people, for the person and for the organization. So they accomplished, check the box, sure, The person still kept their job, 
but there's there was no progress made on diversity. Why? Because it's still gray. It's still gray. See, the benefit of diversity is that you get a chance to see the colors. You see the spectrum. You see it and you include it. That's the benefit of diversity. The more we begin to blend so much so that we want to create this gray circumstance, we lose the value of the individual pieces and the details. The greatest thing about any team is also getting to know the individual parts. That's the greatest thing is every individual part has these has these unique uh, value add that you would not know if you just allowed everything to just blend together. The blend together should be creating something powerful, but it starts with that seed. And again, you've got to know and define diversity. You got to stop saying, well, diversity is anything. No, it's not anything. It's not. It's not. Shame on you if you think that way. That would be saying a fruit is a fruit is a fruit. It doesn't matter what I plant in the ground as long as it's a fruit. That's not the case. That may not be what your organization is interested in. That may not serve your organization well. And it may not serve the customers, the paying people, you know, the people that keep you in business. So sit down today with your HR team. Even if you don't have total influence over the the definition. But I, I ask you and beg you to start clearly defining what diversity is for you and what it is not. And it's okay to have boundaries on the definition of diversity. That is okay. Because the moment you do, now you're going to start identifying talent that matches it. You're going to identify vendors that may be able to help you with that clear definition of diversity. You're going to be able to have clear conversations with your executives about what is, what isn't, and how you get to the next level. Everybody's going to be on a better page. But if you continue to roll around this big gray blob of information, you're going to get this big gray blob of nothing. And it's going to continue to be some dotted line within an organization when in fact it should be the lifeline to an organization. It should be the lifeline, not a dotted line. So at any rate, stop being gray. Stop it. Stop being gray for your own self. Tell people your boundaries, what is important to you, what's not, where you are talented, where you're not. Stop being stop being gray. Be very specific. That's when you're going to start making your progress. Okay. So I'm on a roll now. I have some more, but I will end it there on this particular talk about diversity. Um, You know, you can always catch up with me on jennifertebow.com as well. Um, I made mention to an organization that I've really focused on quite a bit as an advisory board member, nortexaslead.org, L-E-A-D.org. So if you get a chance, look them up. Great organization, absolutely great organization. And in my opinion, they're getting it right. They're kind of helping organizations organizations eliminate the gray and seeing the full spectrum of what diversity is and helping them define it and finding great talent. So if you want to see a great example, then they are a great organization to actually check out. But more to come. Thank you so much. Again, today is Thursday, May 30th, 2013. This is Jennifer Tebow. Talk to you all soon.